Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and Senator Wicker for having this hearing. And I do want to just make a statement for the record and then perhaps follow it up with a quick question, if I might. But um, I think we all know uh, from our daily experiences how important this issue is to people all across the country, whether it's a farmer uh, who's in a field checking real-time commodity prices, a uh, college student video chatting with their family back home, or an executive on the road dealing with a crisis back at headquarters. The ability to communicate with others and to get online without being tethered by a cord is no longer a luxury for many people. It is a necessity. Wireless communications have become an essential part of many Americans' day-to-day -day lives, and I'm glad the subcommittee is exploring the issue today. Without enough spectrum, the private sector will not be able to keep pace with consumer demand, which is growing exponentially. We must make it a priority to increase the availability of spectrum for commercial use, both licensed and unlicensed, as quickly as possible. One important block to open up is the 1755 to 1780 megahertz band of federal spectrum because when paired with the AWS 3 block, there is a global ecosystem of devices and networks that our nation can immediately tap into. Uh, I have been working with Assistant Secretary of Commerce Larry Strickland, the Department of Defense and industry officials to find a common sense solution that balances the needs of wireless consumers and of the Federal Government. It is my hope that we can find a way forward soon that allows this spectrum to be auctioned and cleared in the near future. A recently proposed quote, industry roadmap may offer us a workable path to achieving that goal. Getting more spectrum into the marketplace to the parties that value it most is ultimately the best way for Federal policymakers to encourage new services and to spur competition. Unfortunately, some voices, including the Department of Justice, are calling for the Federal Communications Commission to micromanage the allocation of spectrum among, among wireless carriers. I stand with Chairman Upton, uh, Chairman Walden, and other of our House colleagues who have challenged this perspective in a letter to the FCC back in April. I believe the Commission should not pick winners or losers among individual companies, but instead let all interested participants freely compete against one another in the open market. The FCC began using spectrum auctions because we recognize that the free market is more effective at allocating spectrum than relying on the opinions and predictions of unelected bureaucrats. And with the U.S. being the global leader in 4G LTE connectivity, this approach has clearly been very successful. The Commission should focus on maximizing participation in the coming, upcoming incentive auctions among both broadcasters and potential forward bidders. For example, one way to encourage more bidder activity in rural areas during the auction is to offer licenses in a variety of geographic sizes. The FCC should not be distracted by proposals that could lead to less spectrum being made available and less auction proce proceeds being realized for national priorities like deficit reduction and FirstNet. American consumers, including those farmers, students, and executives I mentioned earlier, are driving the mobile economy, and they, not the government, should pick who wins in the marketplace. And if I might uh, follow that up with a question, I would direct this to, uh, to Dr. Ford. Um, as I mentioned, my ultimate concern is for the welfare of the wireless consumers, a concern that I think a lot of, our, a lot of my uh, members, fellow members of the committee share. You state very clearly in your opening testimony, and I want to quote, if incumbent firms are precluded from obtaining more spectrum, particularly successful firms serving large customer bases, then their quality of service will suffer and consumers will suffer, end quote. Could you uh, elaborate uh, on how manipulating spectrum auction participation may have unintended consequences? Uh, sure. Well, there are many ways, but the, uh, what I was speaking of there uh, is spectrum allows firms to provide service more cheaply uh, or more effectively, a better quality or whatever it may be. And if you limit firms with, that are demonstrably more efficient uh, than others, uh, if you deny them access to that resource and keep them from having a lower marginal cost, say, of providing service, then you the consumer doesn't realize that benefit. If, if giving 10 megahertz of spectrum allows a large firm to reduce its marginal cost by $2 or a small firm by $1, you would obviously want to give it to the large firm who could have the larger marginal cost reduction and pass that on to a significantly larger customer base. So it is always the case in these theoretical models of spectrum caps and spectrum allocation that you have to think about the efficiency of who is winning the auction, who gets the spectrum, and usually the most efficient firms will win the auction because of that reason. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I thank you. I want to thank the, the panel for their, for their great testimony today and, and uh, allow my colleagues on this side to ask questions. Thank you. Thank you.